Human-animal hybrids. What is a human-animal hybrid? Is this a human-animal hybrid? What about this? How about these? Are you aware that in the coming years there will likely be organisms designed for the sole purpose of producing as many implantable human organs as possible? Who would have guessed that the organ shortage would have been solved with the new landmark of still beating Chimpanzee Heart Mountain? This all started when scientists successfully genetically engineered a rat with a mouse's pancreas, and the insulin produced in said pancreas still functioned regularly when in a mouse's system. They were also able to implant some of the cells from this pancreas into a mouse. This mouse had type 1 diabetes, and the new functioning pancreas cells helped to suppress this condition. Another group had also published claims soon after that they had genetically engineered a pig embryo to grow with some human cells. I think this joke is probably lazy, but I think th that guy would make a good policeman. The combination animal was known as a chimera. Eventually, scientists hoped to use technology like this to grow organs like hearts and lungs. These are in consistent short supply because in humans, someone needs to die to give them up. I mean, I would have just killed someone if I needed lungs. Humans really do like taking the long way, don't they? Sometimes I wonder what animals would be best to combine. Feel free to comment what animal combination you think would make the best affront to God below. Chimeras are a hot button issue amongst humanity. Some people think that we shouldn't be using other living creatures as organ factories to prolong the life of an already severely overpopulated species that has done untold damage to every other species and will continue to do so. Those same people are also worried about the possible unintended consequences of growing an organ from a different organism inside of a foreign host and then implanting said amalgamation organ into a random human with organ failure. And those people just don't understand how progress works. It's not gonna stop just cause you don't like it. And more people with more money and influence than you do like it, so... Now there's big people, and there's nothing you can do about it, bitch. Do you like hypotheticals? No? Let's say hypothetically I owned a fast food company. If I was in this situation, I may or may not profit from overall poor health and conditions that result from the overconsumptions of my hypothetical products, such as heart disease and diabetes. If I were to potentially use the same farm animals that I grow for people to eat to make organs that may or may not replace the ones that I destroy with said food consumption, I'd stand to exponentially multiply my hypothetical profits. Let's say I used a similar genetic engineering technology that I used to make these organ factory pigs to make the food cause organ failure more quickly, and the pig generated organs short-lived and in need of replacement every few years. <laughs> what a weird yet incredibly profitable evil idea that just was. Now let's say you watched a YouTube video discussing a topic that may or may not break international law, and like 20 years down the road you see a news story about the very same topic down to the last detail. Would you make the mistake of ratting out the individual who created said original YouTube video? Feel free to choose your words very carefully in the comments below. There's also technology in development that could let us skip the whole genetically augmented human penis producing elephant in the room. 3D printed organs. Scientists believe that they may be able to 3D print organs using either pluripotent fetus stem cells or some kind of novel designer cells as a printing material. Some people lean towards the novel designer cells because if you drink your old liver to death, uh, it's kind of weird if the new one is made of dead babies. I mean, like, that's not a political statement, I just find it strange. This, of course, would be a modern miracle of science, and that is something that I cannot allow to go uncorrupted. Enter designer organs. Any fault with humanity corrected by the intelligent design of their own engineers. Intelligent is a strong word. Uh. Got a weak heart? Now that thing can pump gasoline into a jet engine. Are you tired of smoking being bad for you? Rather than taking a sign from nature, take these new lungs designed to filter smoke. Wanna finally fix the design disaster that is the human foot? Boom! No more back pain or offers for money from strangers wanting to buy pictures of your feet on Twitter. Didn't say it would all be good. Don't even think about the possible repercussions about messing with organ systems and genetic engineering even though humans have a very loose grasp over both of those concepts. I'm sure future humans will figure any problems that probably won't happen out. Imagine the experiences, the possibilities. Eyes capable of seeing a color palette that would make a butterfly weep. Ears that can hear an endless sound range. Skin that can feel a sense of touch more intense than anything that's ever been experienced. And a brain that can at any moment inject itself with an elephant's dose of LSD! Behold, the peak of humanity. Finally, the pinnacle of evolution represented in one perfect creature.
but how did we get here? Like most affronts to nature itself, this one started at a university laboratory. Scientists at Stanford University have transplanted human brain cells into rats. This could potentially be used to study conditions such as schizophrenia and autism, according to some website that I didn't fact check, or remember the name of. Typically, humans frown upon stabbing other humans in the brain, even if the intention was only learning. That's why they put the brain cells into a rat, cause humans don't give a shit about those animals. I don't know where they got the human brain cells, but we're gonna ignore that part. The scientists started this process by growing stem cells into tiny 3D structures called organoids, and then they transplanted them onto baby rat somatosensory cortices. This is the part of the brain that receives signals from their sensory organs, meaning this is the part of the brain that lets you know when you're having a certified Epic Gamer moment. The structures melded with the rat's growing brain, sprouting new neurons complete with blood vessels and connections to other cells. Now that they committed this crime against your human god, they decided to see what they could learn from it. First, they tested if the human parts of the rat brain would respond to external stimuli. The scientist probed the rat's whiskers and the human cells fired, meaning that they receive and transmit information. Then they wanted to see if they could influence the rat's behavior. They slapped a genetically altered set of organoids that get stimulated when they get lasered with blue light into their brain. They then got a light that changed from blue to red and a spout of water. When the rat licked the spout of water, when it was blue, it got water. When it licked it when it was red, nothing happened. Or they fucking shocked it. I don't know, dude. I wrote this like a month ago, and I think it's a hell of a lot funnier if I don't know what the f*** I'm talking about. By the end of a two-week study period, the rats licked the spout more frequently when the light was blue, indicating that the human cells were activating rat neurons to drive reward-seeking behavior. I don't... I don't really know how that worked. Let me re... re <laughs> This technology could potentially be used for a plethora of different science fiction-y brain stuff. For example, it could be used to repair destroyed sections of the brain so from conditions such as stroke or Alzheimer's or stabbed in the f***ing brain. You could expand the brain. It wouldn't make you smarter, but you know, make it bigger or something. I don't know what it would do, but find out is a good reason to try it. While some of you might say you can't beat evolution, you did it with the human knee, and some of your species in health and computer duster. You could even maybe make a giant fleshy brain computer to transmit information using stem cells and human brains. However, these guesses are all coming from an uneducated idiot cramming different pieces of brains in random animals by the name of me. So in conclusion, I don't know. While some say this entire thing is an example of science gone horrifically too far, to that I say, wire me some bitcoins and I'll make an AI deepfake video of your enemy yelling the Forbes top 10 most offensive slurs, and then we'll see, you know, maybe science going too far ain't too bad. Human-animal hybrids. What is a human-animal hybrid? Is this a human-animal hybrid? What about this? Have you heard that a team of scientists have created an embryo that was part human being, part monkey? This all started when an international team of researchers got their hands on some crab-eating macaque monkey embryos. They injected the monkey embryos with human pluripotent stem cells and allowed them to develop ex vivo aka test tube baby style for 19 days. The human cells were given a glowing label so that the scientists could track them. Upon the end of the experiment, 8% of the total embryonic cells in this monkey fetus were human. Fortunately for ethics nerds, but unfortunately for my potential Planet of the Apes documentary, the team did not allow the fetus to be born. If a monkey-human chimera were to be born, it would blur the lines between what is considered human and animal. This raises a lot of questions. Will we consider this a human, an animal, or something in between? If you made a cow with human skin and feet instead of hooves, would it be cannibalism to eat it? What percent of this organism has to be human for it to be given human rights? Would something be more human if it had a human brain rather than just a human foot? What about a human-like face? Would I go to jail for giving a chipmunk a massive human penis? Realistically, this kind of experimentation would lead to entirely new fields of research. With all this comes new ethical conundrums, and most likely law changes. This particular experiment took place in a lab in China, so if we ever made a live one, we might not know about it for a while seeing as how censorship laws there- Nope, nope, stop talking, go to jail.
huh? The being they have created is known as a human monkey chimera. Chimeras often do not survive for very long after creation, but some species are more effective at being chimeraized than others. For example, one previously successful chimera combination is rat and mouse. This raises a ton of moral issues, but if you discard all of those, the possible combinations could be endless. This is not the same as a hybrid animal. Whereas a chimera is a being that has cells from multiple different species, hybrids combine two sets of different species DNA to make genetic material for all of the cells. Like when a tiger meets a lion in a nightclub bathroom after taking nine multicolored pills. Boom, one gestation period later, you got yourself a liger. Ever wonder if a human woman would sign up to have a human chimpanzee hybrid in her vaginas? Enter the proposed hybrid known as the human Z. The first recorded human who attempted to create a human Z via artificial insemination was Ila Ivanovich Ivanovov in the 1920s. I'm sure someone has attempted to create a human chimp hybrid in the natural fashion, but most people probably wouldn't publicize that they did that. Ila inseminated three female chimps with human sperm, but none of them became pregnant. He organized an additional experiment with human volunteers and non-human sperm, but his program was shut down before it could be carried out. Jump to 1977, and one J. Michael Bedford discovered that human sperm could penetrate the outer membranes of a gibbon egg. Don't ask me how he figured it out. I'm sure it was some scientific device, or like a turkey baster. I'm fine with literally anything so long as it wasn't his dick. It has also been found that human sperm binds to gorilla oocytes with almost the same ease as to human ones. So is this possible? Human beings share 95% of their DNA sequence with chimpanzees, and our other close relatives, the bonobo apes, are reportedly able to create hybrid offsprings with the chimps easily. It's a big maybe, so there's only one way to find out. Hypothetically, let's say someone had enough money to fund a laboratory capable of running these types of genetic experiments. If this same someone were to fund said laboratory and begin to attempt the creation of a human-ape hybrid, would the government attempt to intervene and at what point? What countries would be the most forgiving of this behavior and could the aforementioned individual get away with this in international waters? If the individual were to just drop said hypothetical human Z off in a random genetic laboratory with a collar that would say analyze my DNA, sit back with a beer and watch the chaos on the news, how do you think the world would react? Also, if you were to watch a hypothetical YouTube video outlining a scenario that may or may not violate international law, and it happens like 20 years down the road, would you snitch on that individual who made that video? Feel free to choose your words very carefully in the comments below. Fun prank idea, go to a sperm bank and switch around some of the human vials with chimpanzee. Just keep pushing, honey. Can I see my baby? Uh... She already paid, right? There's a ton of really cool science involving chimeras and hybrids, but I need some real evidence. I'm talking like a six-year-old YouTube video of a Russian man injecting his spunk into a chicken egg to make several worm-like monstrosities. Not even joking. We're gonna go through some of the Russian homunculus series. Also, this series is really gross, so uh, you know. Trigger warning, vulnerability. So basically, this guy injects his baby gravy into a pre-chicken, and then he just puts a band-aid on it and waits for a few weeks, and then he cracks it open, and out comes this thing. Yeah. This one is the best. I love that weird worm thing. Unfortunately, weird worm thing spat at vodka land science man's face, and then in a moment of pure unadulterated Russian rage, he obliterates his half chicken son with a book that I failed to Google translate because I don't have a Russian keyboard. After getting spit on, he's not making that same mistake again. He went full Chernobyl suit on us. He stepped up his game. He's doing a full homunculus mukbang up in here. Could you imagine a video collab where this guy works with like one of those food tubers and he cracks open a bunch of homunculi and the other guy just starts shoveling them into his mouth? Moving on. I love how he has his trusty pre-designated homunculus smashing book at the ready in this one. He will not be caught off guard again. Not again. Okay, he left this one alive, and now he's keeping it kind of like an interesting beta fish. Honestly, pretty cool pet, 9 out of 10. It appears to have grown much bigger, and now it is undulating. It's beginning to take on a shape that somehow really looks a teeny bit like both types of human genitalia. That one has an eyeball. I'm not saying anyone owes anyone royalties. I just know we don't want to have to get the law involved. I don't know if those creatures you're making have skeletons, but if they do, your closet's full of them. 
Things are getting a bit more advanced now. We have the baby of Amoeba and Patrick Starr hanging out with his best friend, a living fleshlight. Name a more iconic duo. I'll wait. And it appears that one of two things have begun to happen. Either the fleshlight is attempting to vor the eye starfish, or they have combined into one being. I will update you as the story develops. They do appear to be fusing as one being. Yeah, I, I don't think one is eating the other. I, I mean, all of these body parts are just terrifying and wrong to me, so it's anyone's guess. Wow, this is quite a dramatic change. It kind of looks like the Dumbo octopus just a little bit. Oh, he's going to probe it with the poking stick. Homunculus, <laughs> no enjoy the poking stick. Okay, so you know how I just said that they were combining? Now I'm not so sure. Maybe Dr. Frankenstein's fleshlight really was just eating the other one? Either way, it appears to have foregone the head and instead just replaced it with an upward-facing anus. Quite an interesting evolutionary strategy. It appears to have developed teeth, kind of like one of those sea cucumbers that grow teeth in their anus. Do you know what I'm talking about? Probably not. Moving on. Oh my god, look at it, it just ate a raspberry. Nature is so beautiful sometimes. I mean, like, not right now, that's a disgusting abomination, but I don't know, go outside. I don't know if I'm gonna have to censor that. Did it just poop, vomit, sneeze, or bust a nut? I'm not really sure if there's much of a difference if you really only have one hole for everything. Oh my god, is that a fish? Oh, it's dead. It's dead. I was expecting the homunculus to try to, like, eat it or something. I mean, like, other than everything that someone may object to morally or ethically here, at the very least, that's incredibly anticlimactic. Is this real? No, of, of course not. I mean, like, I believe that when I was a kid, don't get me wrong, but there comes a time in every person's life where they have to inject their spunk into a chicken egg and learn things for themselves. It's still an incredibly impressive art project. I have no idea how he managed to make those worm monsters look so realistic. So, homunculus guy? Bravo. This is amazing. Hey, fun fact, did you know you could buy a dead bat on Amazon? Thanks, Jeff Bezos. If you like this video and want to see more, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe with all notifications enabled. Or I'll make you take shrooms and stuff. Shout out the inner circle. Love y'all. Okay, bye. <laughs>